Okay, so this question is going to provide you some value in that it's slightly unusual, and you as the student tend not to think of this diagnosis when you're studying for the exam, but it's on the NBMEs for step one. And truthfully, this is fair game for 2CK as well. Okay, this is a, I would say, very solidly an IM level question for 2CK, but this is similar to question I've seen on NBME for step one. Uh, so give you some value here. You'll be pretty content with this. So 52-year-old dude, he's got pain and numbness in his left hand for the past week. Vitals are normal. Peripheral pulse is equal and full bilaterally. Cardiac exam shows a mid-systolic click. That's your mitral valve prolapse. Completely benign incidental finding, usually in USMLE vignettes. They like doing this. And in turn, I uh, did the same by being an asshole here. Okay, why not just throw it in the vignette for kicks? They like doing this for psych questions. So they might give you a panic attack where there's a mid-systolic click and you're like, OMG, is it cardiac? It's not. It's just they like throwing it in as an incidental finding. So photograph of the hand is shown. You can see it's erythematous. This is called erythromalalgia. Erythromalalgia. Erythro red, malalgia pain. Uh, so painful red hand. This can be seen with many diagnoses. Uh, classically, Raynaud phenomenon although this is not Raynaud phenomenon. Uh, that's classic for Crest syndrome, part of systemic sclerosis. Also, uh, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, which is not the diagnosis here, but we'll talk about uh, shortly. But uh, nevertheless, painful red hand, okay? So we just keep reading. Hemoglobin, 14.4 grams per deciliter. That's in the normal range, 13 to 17.5 for men and non-menstruating women. Hematocrit, 43.2%. Normal range is going to be 47 plus or minus 5 for men and non-menstruating women. Uh, should note that hematocrits usually triple the hemoglobin. So hematocrit in percentage, triple the hemoglobin in grams per deciliter, usually. Okay, it doesn't have to be like that in the USMLE question, but if you're wondering how these numbers relate, you're like, oh yeah, like I didn't notice that, but okay, so just a little mini factoid for you. MCV 90, uh, that's normal range, so 80 to 100 femtoliters. Platelets, 1,600,000 per microliter, absurdly fucking elevated, okay? Normal range, 150 to 450,000 per microliter. And white blood cells, 7,000 per microliter. That's normal. So four to 11,000 is our normal range. Neutrophils, 68%. That's elevated. So neutrophils, we expect 55 to 60%. Eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, all normal. Lymphocytes normal, 24%. Lymphocytes should be about 20 to 25%. So our neutrophils are elevated. Now, when we have a shift of neutrophils in uh, above 60%, we call that a left shift and often indicates a bacterial infection, okay? So we can see the white blood cell counts normal and the vitals are normal. So it doesn't overtly seem like there's a fever, or sorry, it doesn't overtly seem like there's an infection because he's afebrile and uh, he does not have a, a leukocytosis, but we note that the neutrophils are shifted to the left, which otherwise seems like a bacterial infection possibly. And the platelets, as we said, very fucking elevated. And this dude has a red hand. So we look at the answer, even if we're not sure, okay, we look at the answers here. Acute myelogenous leukemia, choice A. Wrong fucking answer. If they want that, they're going to tell you in the in the white blood cell count breakdown that there are blasts. They literally will just say like 20% blasts, okay? And if they don't tell you overtly blasts, what they'll do is give you the image of your classic hour rod uh, within the uh, myeloid lineage blast cell, which will be your... Uh, the reason it's blue is your myeloperoxidase composes it, which is a blue-green heme-containing pigment. Tons we can talk about, but this is an AML, okay? We don't have blasts here, and we don't have a picture of an hour rod. Um, and we often see in leukemias, not always, but I would say maybe at least three-quarters of your U.S. million questions, you're going to have a leukocytosis, a high white blood cell count for your leukemias. I would say, and I'd say at least half, of half of the time that your white blood cell count's elevated, it's very fucking elevated. So you'd have like a leukocyte count of 50,000 or 70,000 or 200,000, absurdly elevated. Whereas infections tend to give you white blood cell count in the teens, 
or in the 20s, thousand. Pertussis, sometimes 30 to 40,000, can look like leukemia, ALL in a kid, not to get sidetracked. But, uh, and then fewer, some difficult 2CK questions might give you, e.g., CML, where your white blood cell count's only 14,500, could be 200,000, but it might give you only slightly elevation, slight elevation in, in white blood cell count. I'm articulating this as I am because when you're trying to diagnose a leukemia on the step, it should be a red flag in your head when your white blood cell count is super fucking elevated, but it doesn't have to be. And rarely it can be in the normal range or even low. I've seen an ALL question in a kid where it was low. It almost looked like an aplastic anemia. So I'm just going to keep moving us forward. Chronic myelogenous leukemia, wrong fucking answer. If that's the case, they're going to tell you increased metamyelocytes, myelocytes, promyelocytes. They will mention at least two of those cell types in the spread. Okay, so it's often a way to instantaneously answer the question. Um, they like giving you a smear that shows you all different types of cells. Looks like a motley mix is how I colloquially refer to it as, which is literally showing your metamyelocytes, myelocytes, promyelocytes, okay? And uh, Philadelphia chromosome, okay, 922 translocation, BCR, ABL, and it's an oncogenic tyrosine kinase, and you treat with a matinib, which causes fluid retention, the matinib being... Uh, and a BCR ABL tyrosine kinase inhibitor. So we move forward. Essential thrombocytosis, close, but wrong fucking answer. So the reason essential thrombocytosis is wrong, essential, thromb essential thrombocytosis is caused usually by a JAK2 mutation. It's a type of myeloproliferative disorder. And uh, we are going to have classically polycythemia vera, myelofibrosis, essential thrombocytosis. These are classic diagnoses seen with JAK2 mutations, okay? And essential thrombocytosis is going to give us a high platelet count. And you say, well, why would that be wrong here? Okay, high platelets can cause our erythromalalgia. The platelets lodge in the small vessels, cause pain. You say, why couldn't this be essential thrombocytosis? It's because of the neutrophils being elevated, which gives us a diagnosis of secondary thrombocytosis, also known as reactive thrombocytosis, okay? This is what the NBME wants. They want you to be able to differentiate reactive thrombocytosis, which is due to infection, and essential thrombocytosis, which is just uh, an etiology due to a JAK2 mutation unrelated to infection. You say, but I don't get it. How does like infection relate to high platelets? Sometimes infections can cause high platelets. You might get an endocarditis question where they tell you the platelets are 900,000. You're like, what the fuck? Why are the platelets 900,000? It's called reactive thrombocytosis or secondary thrombocytosis. It can happen sometimes. You'll see it, especially in 2CK level questions. All right. Uh, platelets might be a million. So that's when I'm going through this question, if you were to send me this type of question, I would say, oh, wow, okay, plates are fucking elevated. Looks like a central thrombocytosis. Oh, but the neutrophils, there's a left shift. He's afebrile. Okay, challenging. And the white blood cell count's normal. Challenging. But that's a neutrophilic shift. They're real fucking slick. Okay? That's, this is a hard question. This isn't a two, this isn't a 220 level question. This would get you 250, 260 plus. Okay. Some of the questions I make, I'm an asshole and they're a little bit more challenging. So, uh, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, wrong answer. That's going to be a plasma cytoid. Oid means looks like, but not. So fibrinoid looks like fibrin, ain't fibrin. Marfanoid and meant to be looks like Marfan syndrome. It's not, it's not Marfan syndrome. Plasma cytoid cell looks like a plasma cell, ain't a plasma cell. Okay, so it's an expansion of a plasma cytoid cell, and you're going to get a hyperviscosity syndrome, which can present as blurry vision, headache, uh, Raynaud phenomenon. You're going to have, you're going to do a uh, serum protein electrophoresis, which will show you an M spike of IgM. Okay, multiple myeloma, IgG usually, or IgA. Um, a lot we can talk about, but in Waldenstrom, you do not have hypercalcemia. Multiple myeloma, you do. In Waldenstrom, you do not have Benz-Jones proteinuria. In multiple myeloma, you do. You do not have lytic lesions in Waldenstrom. In multiple myeloma, you do. Okay, a lot we can talk about. So, but this is secondary thrombocytosis, okay? I want to keep this clip somewhat concise, all right? I know you don't want a 27-minute clip here. So your take-home point for USMLE is be aware of essential thrombocytosis as a 
primary bone marrow condition, usually JAK2 mutation, where you get a super high platelet count, okay? Just be aware that the diagnosis exists. Mm -hmm. And then also know of secondary thrombocytosis, which is also known as reactive thrombocytosis. Sometimes infections can cause your platelets to go elevated, all right? And it's not due to any type of mutation. So two slightly unusual diagnoses that resources tend not to cover, okay? Uh, that you're now made aware of, and uh, th this stuff is on the NBMEs, okay? So that's your value point. Obviously, I'm going to make more clips. If you liked this, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.